Welcome to the local campaign on Rogers TV. This is debate, the debate for Markham Stovall. I'm your moderator, Chris Emanuel. Over the next half hour, we'll hear from the candidates on a range of issues. They will also get questions from both myself as the moderator, as well as taped questions from members of the public. They will have one minute to respond, and then we open up the, uh, the discussion for an open forum. Uh, I, the only time I will intervene as moderator is to ensure that candidates don't talk over each other so that our viewers at home can hear. Uh, we have invited all registered candidates and the candidates uh, that are here today are those that accepted. I will introduce those candidates. On our left is Gregory Hines with the New Democratic Party. In the middle is Paul Calandra with the Conservative Party of Canada. And on the right is Jane Philpott, the Liberal Party of Canada candidate. We did a draw for seating and speaking order. Uh, and what we will do is we'll start with opening statements. And we'll start with you, Gregory, of one minute. Hi. Well, my name is Gregory Hines. I'm the NDP candidate for Markham Stovall. And why do I want to be your next MP? Um, well, I believe I was raised in poverty, um, had the opportunities to not let that overshadow me or even change who I was. I was always finding myself to do something more. Um, whether it was I had the privilege of working with First Nations, Métis people, had the privilege of working with seniors and people with physical, mental, and uh, disabilities. Um, I've had the privilege of working with um, um, at-risk youth and um, just different a range of people. And I always felt that I was called to do more. And whether elected or not, I'm going to continue to do more. Um, um, I just want the opportunity to do more. Thank you, Gregory. Uh, Paul? You have one minute. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Paul Calandra, and I've uh, had the honor of serving as your member of parliament since 2008. And of course, in that time, we've seen record levels of investment brought to our community. We've done that, of course, by working with our provincial members of parliament, my uh, colleagues at the municipal level, councillors and mayors, and of course, federal members of parliament from all, uh, from all different parties. We've seen such investments uh, in arts and culture, whether it's the Stouffville Museum expansion or the Markham uh, Museum expansion road expansions throughout Ballantrae uh, uh, and into, uh, into Markham. Uh, and of course we brought the Rouge National Urban Park to, uh, to our community, ending what was a 42 uh, uh, year history of, uh, of frustration for local farmers in the area. Moving forward as your member of parliament, I want to continue to bring those very important investments to the community while balancing the budget and continuing to invest in tax cuts for you. Uh, Canadian families because that's the appropriate way to grow our economy. Again, thank you for your support and it has of course been a great honor of mine to serve as your Member of Parliament since 2008. Thank you, Paul. Jane, you have one minute. Hello, my name is Dr. Jane Philpott and I'm honored to be the federal Liberal candidate in the riding of Markham Stovall for the upcoming election. I've lived in the riding of Markham Stovall for 17 years and during that time I've worked as a family doctor based out of Markham Stovall Hospital. In recent years, I had the privilege of being the Chief of the, of the Department of Family Medicine at Markham Stovall Hospital, and during that time had the opportunity to open the Health for All Family Health Team, which was designed not only to provide excellent primary care for patients in the community, but also to train new family doctors for Markham Stovall. I decided to enter politics because I learned that it takes more than medicine for people to be healthy. It takes a strong economy, it takes great employment opportunities, and it takes a healthy environment. I am honored to be a candidate in this election and I will hope that I will have the opportunity to serve you in Ottawa. Thank you. Thank you, candidates. Uh, we're now going to get into the question and answer uh, portion. Our first question comes uh, uh, via tape. Hi, my name is Paul Peary and I'm a councillor for the Town of Aurora and a board representative on the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. My question to all the candidates is what is the biggest problem in your opinion facing local municipalities and what would your party do to address the issue? Thank you. Uh, each candidate will have a minute to respond. Paul, we'll start with you. Sure. Well, obviously, uh, we've seen a tremendous amount of, uh, of improvements over the last number of years of how the federal government has been working with our partners at the provincial and federal level, which was, of course, uh, highlighted by the longest and largest infrastructure program. When I look around our community, obviously, transit and transportation are the biggest challenges that I think uh, confront our municipalities in York Region. That's why, of course, in our last budget, the Prime Minister introduced a... Uh, uh, an, a billion dollar urban transit uh, infrastructure program which will re renew yearly and of course I was very honored to have the Prime Minister visit Whitchurch Stouffville 
when we announced the largest infrastructure program in Canadian history, but with a focus on small municipalities of under 100,000 so that they could fully participate in the improving of infrastructure. We've done that with improvements to uh, Viva uh, Transit, of uh, course, down uh, Highway 7. We've brought the, the uh, GO Train expansion. We've brought the subway to Vaughan. So these are the issues that I think will help us grow economic development, bring jobs, and create opportunity for our, uh, our, our residents going forward. And of Thank course, you. we've invested in health care, which I'm very Jane, proud of. You have one minute. I'm pleased to get this question from someone representing the Federation for Canadian Municipalities. And as our viewers may know, this is an organization that has spoken specifically about the deficit in infrastructure in cities, particularly the greater Toronto area. The markham stouffville riding is uh, affected by this deficit in infrastructure, and that's one of the reasons why the Liberal plan includes a serious investment, the largest investment in Canadian history in infrastructure. We are going to invest $60 billion in new money to infrastructure over the next uh, five years. And a third of that is going to go specifically to public transit infrastructure. That's roads and bridges and, of course, uh, transportation opportunities for people in our riding. I hear when I go to the door to door how much people are frustrated by the time that it takes them to move across the community, and we're pleased to be able to help address this issue. Thank you, Jane. Gregory, you have one minute. I also um, have heard the same thing going uh, door to door. Uh, infrastructure is one of the biggest um, um, in our mun municipality. Uh, we know that a lot of seniors trying to get to and from uh, certain places within Markham Stouffville is really kind of challenging and difficult. Um, so the NDP also would like to also uh, focus on infra infrastructure. We'd also like to focus, and we're also hearing from a lot of families and parents um, about affordable childcare. That's another issue that we have heard across uh, Markham Stouffville. Um, parents not able to uh, both go back to the workforce, but one staying home. So we see those as as, as viable. Um, uh, we see those as issues that that are in our municipality, but we also want to fo focus on affordable uh, $15 a day child care as well as infrastructure. So yes. Thank you, Gregory. Candidates, uh, we're going to open the floor now mm -hmm. for a few minutes for open discussion. Yeah, well, it, uh, I think it's, uh, it, it highlights, uh, of course, the Canadian Federation of Municipalities uh, uh, was very uh, uh, applauded the government's investment for infrastructure. It wasn't just the largest infrastructure program in Canadian history. Uh, it was also the doubling of the gas tax uh, fund, which we brought in. Uh, we doubled it. We made it permanent for our municipalities. We're seeing municipalities across York Region uh, using that, those funds to improve uh, roads, to improve transit. Uh, but we've, we've gone further. We brought in the Recreational Infrastructure Program, which, uh, which made improvements to our local uh, arenas and cultural uh, attractions. One of the problems that, of course, that we have, Jane, and you, 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 you should know, would know this, of course, is that although the federal government wants to make important infrastructure improvements, we see that the provincial government has decided that those transit improvements won't include Markham Stouffville. The provincial government is talking about expansion of the GO train, but they want to stop it at Markham Unionville. We want to bring it to Markham, Mount Joy, and to Lincolnville. We want to expand the 404. Give, uh, so the province they, doesn't want Jane to, want to do that. Yes, so these are the types of things that we need to do and to continue and I, to know, foster not, growth. This, we're talking about federal government investments, and I'm going to focus on that now. And one of the things that I am really pleased about with the Liberal plan is the fact that we are going to put those investments in now. Both the Conservative and the NDP plans are very much back-end loaded your investments in infrastructure. Canadians need those improvements to come immediately. They are struggling to get to work this year. They need the opportunity to improve their quality of life. We need to get jobs for young people. We need to get high quality jobs that will come with a major investment in public infrastructure and we're going to do it right off the bat. It's actually not quite true because of course there is the doubling of the gas tax uh, fund which uh, our municipalities are getting. Stouffville uh, receives uh, about a, a million dollars a year specifically through the gas tax refund for infrastructure projects. Markham I believe it's about six million dollars a year. But let's not forget we already have an infrastructure program that's in place. Right, we have the Canada 150 double. program. We're going to double we have the, the Canada investment. 150 program. We have the largest infrastructure in Canadian history. We're doing it while balancing the budget cutting taxes for Canadians to the lowest level since the 1950s. The Liberals are proposing a program of $140 billion worth of new spending financed by massive tax increases well, on families, from massive tax increases on individuals. 
It's unaffordable. You know that you can't do it. And this will cause the Canadian, this will cause the Canadian economy to collapse. Will no, it cost will not. hundreds of thousands this of jobs, the time Jane, and to it is completely in our unaffordable. Future. This is the time to invest. I'll interject. I want to give we'll Gregory give uh, Gregory. Uh, yeah, I'm just, 30 I'm just seconds. saying. I, 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 you know, when it comes to infrastructure for the NDP, we want to focus on infrastructure on so many levels without uh, going into deficits. That's one thing that we will not do. We, want, Gregory, we can't do that. Gregory, it's a good time um, to invest. It's in a our great future. time to invest, Gregory, but we can also balance the budget. And we see that you know the the economy is coming back, uh, and we just want to make sure that when we make our investments into infrastructure, that we're not doing it by cutting uh, different types of programs ar around that. So we want to make sure that we're focused and that we make a calculated decision on infrastructure around Markham Silva and without, within Toronto as well. So we don't want to just make you know, uh, a fast uh, approach to anything okay. or I use think Thank you, candidates. Uh, we're going to move on to the next question. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, uh, your job is to make sure you jump in uh, during the open forum question. So the next question will be from myself. It'll be to you uh, first, Jane. Uh, uh, I'm sure knocking on doors, you're uh, meeting residents and finding out about important local riding issues. What are the important local issues that you're finding and how will you use your voice in Ottawa to advocate on those matters? Thank you. So I will touch on some of the things that I have already mentioned because uh, it, 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 these are economic issues that are facing Canadians. Canadians are struggling to make ends meet. People in our community are struggling every day to make ends meet. And so we are pleased to offer an economic plan that is going to be fair to all Canadians, that's going to get money into the hands of the Canadians who need it most. We have a child care benefit, the Canada Child Benefit, which we believe is going to be fairer, is going to give uh, 9 out of 10 Canadian families are going to get more money with our fairer, tax-free, larger Canada Child Benefit than the current plan that's being offered uh, by the government. So we're pleased about that. We're also pleased that we are going to be able to provide a tax break to Canadians, particularly middle-income Canadians. We are going to stop uh, sending checks to millionaires and we're going to get hands into the money of the Canadians who need it most. Thank you, Jane. Gregory, you have one minute. Well, some of the things I'm hearing exactly is, again, the, the economy. The economy is number one on everyone's list. Um, but how we go about doing that is, is, is another question. For the NDP, we want to, I know we have said it over and over again, created, uh, you know, the uh, $15 a day daycare or child care. That allows people to get back to work. A lot of single home income earners are in Markham Stouffville, and they just want life to be more affordable. Instead of just giving a tax incentive at the end of the year, we want to make it around across the board that the $15 a day child care and the spaces, the 1,000 spaces that we want to open, will allow um, job opportunities to happen within those spaces. We're, we're allowing women to have the choice whether to go back to work or to stay at home if they choose to, but to give these families back some sort of uh, a economics, some, some sort of break is what the NDP is about. We're for the middle class families and our, our uh, economic plan is, is by far one of the best. Thank you, Gregory. Paul. Well, obviously, uh, we're going to continue uh, focusing on jobs and economic growth, safety and security. That's what we hear most often at the doors. Canadians want us to continue to focus on creating new, sustainable, long-term jobs by growing the Canadian economy. And we've done that. We've done that by by putting in place policies that have helped create 1.3 million net new jobs in the Canadian economy. Two-thirds of those are in uh, high-wage sectors. 85% of those are full-time uh, uh, private sector uh, jobs. So we're very, very proud of that. But uh, it, you have to do more than that. And, and Jane's quite right. You have to put more money back in the pockets of Canadians. And that's what we've been doing. We've brought the federal tax burden down to its lowest point since the 1950s. In over 50 years since Diefenbaker was the Prime Minister, our taxes are at their lowest level and we're going to continue to do that. We brought incentives like the tax-free savings account, which the Liberals will take away, the universal child care benefit, which the Liberals will take away. Their plan is $146 billion of extra spending financed by massive tax increases on all Canadians. It's unaffordable. Thank you. And even with that, Time? we still run a massive deficit. Uh, now open forum for this. So I need to jump on that. 99% of Canadians under the Liberal plan will pay, pay either the same amount of income tax or less income tax. It is only the top 1% of income tax earners that we're, 1% of income earners, we're going to ask to pay a little bit more so that 99% of Canadians will pay the same or less in income taxes. We want to make sure yeah. that we have a fair yeah, plan. There's, there's only one little thing. Um, with, the, with the 1% that you guys are going to tax, there's, we've seen, even CBC has done studies where uh, we've seen those uh, percentage 
of people who can afford things are doing offshore accounts. How are you guys going to tackle that issue when it comes across? We have an amazing I mean, economic look, team that has addressed that very yeah, issue. It's, it's not just that, Jane. Uh, you're, you're, it's disingenuous to suggest that uh, that you're not going to be increasing taxes. Somebody, through uh, your, your payroll tax increases, somebody earning uh, $45,000 a year will pay an extra $750, $750 in taxes. At $1,000, you're paying an extra $1,000. Your plan calls for the elimination of uh, the universal child care benefit, your plan calls because for the elimination, going to replace it with the elimination the of Canada income splitting, your plan calls for the elimination of the adult fitness tax credit, the children right. fitness tax credit, it calls for the elimination uh, of the arts tax credit, and, and, you've just, can, uh, and you, haven't even, you haven't even told Canadians when you introduce your platform, you haven't even told Canadians how you would still, what yeah. Taxes you would cut to make up for the ten to twelve billion dollars that you have we not have accounted for. We have talked about the taxes Across that we're going all to cut. Things give, uh, like Canadians will pay more Sorry, under a Liberal Canada government. Will give uh, Jane a chance to respond to those. Okay, so we have talked about each of those things, and some of the things that we're going to do. I've already talked about how we're going to uh, help uh, by asking the top income earners to pay a little bit more, so that middle class Canadians, 99% of Canadians, will pay the same or less. At the same time, we're going to cut things like income splitting because 85% of Canadian families do not benefit from income splitting. It unfairly discriminates against. So, somebody who makes 45,000 rich, they are going to pay 60,000. Are they rich? It unfairly discriminates your plan, against they single pay more. Canadians single and, and two. People Parent families who are earning lower wages. So, are, will you be removing the, 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 the tax credits that we brought uh, brought in for we uh, are, you talked uh, for child care? Family that makes forty five thousand dollars. They're going to pay less on that forty five thousand dollars. They'll pay an extra plan. tax of seven hundred and fifty dollars a payroll tax. At sixty thousand, they'll pay an extra. Uh, they'll pay an extra sure one thousand dollars. Well, you well, get well, rid of all of those tax we're credits. We're going to give uh, uh, Greg a chance. Yeah, to just run. just just okay. to, to cap on that. I mean, both their plans. I mean, for for the Liberal plans. Being in a deficit for me, it's really hard to leave that debt on the backs of our future children. That's number one. Um, you know, and when we look at uh, income splitting, we are also going to take away income splitting as well and put it to, to good use. Our, our approach really, when it comes to the NDP, is really our approach is number one, um, we're, we're going for the middle class. We're focusing on the 85% of Canadians Can I jump right, in? right in. And, and what we're trying to do is not just um, give everyone money and, and say, hey, this is what we're going to do. But we're going to back that up, take away the income splitting, take away um, the uh, tax-free uh, savings account, bring it back to 5000 and allow you, people Greg. to We're going to have to wrap money. this up. Uh, yeah, and we'll, we're, uh, Greg, the next question is going to you, and it's going to be on tape. My name is Michael and I work in the financial industry. My question for the candidates is how does your party plan to fund government initiatives and what would the impact be at both an individual and a corporate level? Greg? I want to make sure I understand the, the, the question. He's it's talking a costing about... question on your platform promises. Okay. Uh, well, uh, fair, fair question, but um, what I would say to that is, um, and I'm hoping I'm, I'm answering this correctly. Uh, when it comes to um, small businesses, for example, we are going to lower the small business taxes from 11% to 9%, giving people more incentives to hire more people and things like that in, in that terms. Um, in terms of cost, um, I'm not really at liberty. I can't remember at this point uh, to, to answer that question effectively yet. Go ahead. Thank you. Paul, you have a minute. Uh, well, look, we've uh, made no secret of the fact that we think that in good economic times, and we've seen the economy continue to grow, uh, we've gotten great numbers, uh, of course, for June and July. We've seen the creation of, uh, of uh, over 1.3 million net new jobs, but we're saying we're going to remain focused on balancing, balancing the budget and tax relief for Canadian families and our small, medium, and large job creators. We want to invest, but we want to invest in, in, uh, in the economy by balancing, also ensuring that we have a balanced budget. We've done that. We've brought taxes down to the lowest level since 1958, but we've done it while at the same time bringing the largest increase in infrastructure spending in Canadian history. And right now, in the first four months of this year, we're running on over $5.2 billion surplus. We ended last year with a close to $2 billion surplus, and we think that the best way to grow the economy and to be able to pay for important programs moving forward is to ensure balanced budgets and more money back in the pockets of Canadian families and in Canadian small, medium and large job creators. Thank you, Paul. Jane. So it's an excellent and fair question, which some of which I've already answered in my previous comments about some of the ways that we'll be costing our program. There will be a $3 billion a year savings by asking the top 1% of income earners to pay a little bit more. There will be a 2 
$2 billion savings out of cancelling income tax splitting, for instance. So I want to use my time just to jump to uh, the deficit question that uh, Gregory raised earlier. And I want to talk about the fact that there are times when it's great to invest. And I suspect that if you had opportunity, Greg, that you would buy a house. And that's an example of how an individual might at certain times go into a situation where they would invest in their future. We do that when we buy a house. We do that when we get a uh, post-secondary school ec education. This is a time for Canada to invest in its future. This is a time when income rates are low, when the debt to GDP ratio is low, and we intend that for it to continue getting lower through our investments. This is a time to invest in our future, and we have a Liberal plan that will do just that. Thank you, candidates. Open forum. Well, it's, uh, it's interesting because a Liberal, liberal plan ca uh, calls for spending increases of $147 billion over the next four years financed by massive tax increases on all Canadians, we have on all Canadians, and even with that, you still are unable to balance the budget a year is a at 10, deficit 10 for to the next 13 three billion, and you only. have not even accounted for six billion dollars in spending is completely unaccounted for in your in your in your Our platform. Plan is perfectly the, the way that you grow we an economy, understand. the way you grow an Canada, economy we'll is to just invest have one at a time. in, is yeah. to invest in, in cutting taxes for Canadians so they have more money in their pockets, cutting taxes for our small, medium, and large job creators. That's how you grow an economy. Exactly. The Liberal and NDP plans both uh, seem to suggest that uh, it's, it's what you're suggesting, really, is that you, it's okay for the poor to be poor as long as the rich are also less rich. That's not no, how you no, grow no. an thank economy. You. Jane, you have a chance to respond then, Gregory. So thank you. So our plan, our investment in infrastructure will do multiple things. It will, of course, allow us to have amazing infrastructure. Imagine the public transit infrastructure that we would have with this kind of incredible investment into the greater Toronto area. At the same time, we're going to create great jobs. Uh, for, for young people and people of all ages across the community. We're going to increase productivity by allowing people to get to work on time and get home at the end of the day to do what they'd like to do to improve their quality of life. So absolutely, we are going to be doing those things that you talked about, creating jobs for Canadians and improving their quality of life. We're going to run, just, we've been honest about the fact we're yeah, going to run a moderate deficit. deficit for three years and balance the books by 2019, at which time we will have a, a much improved infrastructure in this area. Thank well, you. well looking, at, looking at your plan and looking at everything that the uh, Liberals and the Conservatives are, are looking at, right now I, I can just tell you the Conservative plan is not working. I'm feeling the effects of it. Um, I know millions of Canadians are feeling sure the effects are. of it. Um, but going back to what the NDP proposes, of course, when we look at plans that we're offering, we're offering to balance the budget at the same time because we shouldn't be leaving, leaving uh, you know, uh, you know, a deficit for our children. Like we should not. I cannot look my children in the face and say, you know, I'm going to leave all this uh, last-minute debt to you. It's like buying a house, like you said. But if something happens and I have to leave that to my children, that's not a responsible um, a way to go about it. So focusing on the middle class, focusing on jump-starting the economy by focusing on small businesses, lowering the taxes there, um, uh, bringing uh, the corporate um, taxes back up to 17% from 15. Thank you, Gregory. Did you so know? Uh, I'm going to interject here yeah. uh, because we're running out of time. We're going to have time for one more question. Uh, Paul, we'll start with you. And it's a real segue from the last one. That we've been in a global economic downturn since 2008. Uh, I think there's maybe a difference of opinions on how bad it is currently or, or, or at worst. How do you and your party view the current economic situation and how do you plan to stimulate the economy and grow? Paul, one minute. Well, yes, you're right. We have been in a global economic downturn since 2008, but when you look around the world, Canada has weathered this downturn better than any other economy in the world. We've created 1.3 million net new jobs in that time frame. We're one of the only economies that has, has a balanced budget and actually a surplus at the same time. We have reduced taxes to their lowest level, federal taxes to their lowest level since 1950. We've brought in the largest, longest, uh, infrastructure program in Canadian history and we're going to do that moving forward. We cut taxes for our small, medium and large job creators. We've, we've brought individual taxes down. We've put me mechanisms in place so that Canadians can save for their future, the tax-free savings account. And we'll continue to make these important investments with a balanced budget with cutting your taxes because we think that's how you grow the economy growing forward. These other two parties are talking about billions of dollars in new taxes, unfinanced uh, uh, spending promises. They have a 
The Liberals are 147 billion Paul? financed by massive Thank tax you. increases. Thank you. Jane, That's uh, not how you Paul, I'm going to interrupt. Economy. Sorry. Uh, Jane, you have one minute to respond. So Gregory hit the nail on the head a little while ago by saying that Canadians are feeling the pain. Canadians are feeling these rough economic times, and we are in recession, whether the Conservatives will admit it or not. In fact, um, even though they inherited from a Liberal government a, a series of surpluses that were put in place by great fiscal management under Liberals, they ran six straight deficits until they've finally started to turn things around. But Canadians are not feeling it. We need an investment in our future. We need a growing economy. We need jobs for young people and people of all ages. And that will happen with investing in our future, with creating jobs through a major investment, not only in public transit infrastructure, but in green technology infrastructure and in social infrastructure that will allow Canadians to have affordable housing, will allow Canadians to be able to uh, take care of their children and take care of their families. Thank you, Jane. Gregory, one minute. Well, I, I'm, I'm in awe. I'm just, uh, when, it comes to, when it comes to the economy and, and, and everything that I stand for, the, the, the difference between the Conservatives and the Liberals for the NDP is our focus. Our focus is the middle class. And anyone who knows Economy 101, um, when you go into a business, you don't focus on the 15% of high performers. You focus on the middle to lower performers. And when you focus on those with uh, things like uh, our, our affordable child care, like we've spoken about, um, infrastructure, when we are talking about things like that, we are looking to Canadians to really invest in a party that isn't um, going to run massive deficits or a party that had their chance to give universal uh, child care to every Canadian two terms. The Liberal had that chance and did not do it. But now, because the NDP is the threat, they're looking to us because Canadians are wanting change. And how they're going to get change is by actually getting a party that thinks and feels like all Canadians are feeling now. Thank you. We've got just over a minute uh, for this portion. So Gregory, I'm quickly. happy that you talked about vulnerable people in our mm -hmm. society, and particularly vulnerable children. That's why I'm glad that the Canada Child Benefit will actually help to raise over 300,000 children out of poverty by providing a larger, fairer, tax-free benefit for the families that need it most. What actually, you're actually doing, though, Jane, is you're, yeah. you're eliminating the universal child care benefit. You're eliminating income why splitting for families. Why should it be a universal benefit? You're eliminating why do the child millionaires fitness need tax a credit. Check. You're eliminating the children's art tax credit, you're eliminating the transit Ours tax simpler, credit. Fairer, what you're talking larger, about doing is increasing one taxes Canada, on please. all Canadians to the highest level. Look, the, the, what you're talking about is exactly what we're seeing in Ontario. Failed system that has brought high deficits yeah, to the people right. of Ontario, high taxes to the people of Ontario. They're paying more for hydro. Yep. They're paying more for services. They're running massive deficits. Their credit rating has been, I think you been should downgraded. Be focusing on the federal they have been downgraded and twice. The problems that the federal have been downgraded has twice. Raised. So this is what happens, Maybe you Jane. Maybe should work with them when you raise taxes, this is what happens when you run massive deficits. We are not running massive deficits. We'll give Jane a quick moment to respond. We'll continue to balance the budget. We'll continue to cut taxes because it's the right thing for Canadians. So it's 30 seconds. Unfortunate that Mr. Calandra is shifting the blame to the province. Mr. Calandra, you're shifting the blame to the province. 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 You're